What's up, y'all? As you can see, I'm back out here at the range again on a cloudy day, getting a little bit cool out here because the wind's picking up on me, so I might have to run grab my jacket here in a little bit, but it definitely ain't nothing I can't handle long enough to get done what should be a really interesting 10 mil test. But y'all know the deal by now. We got the jelly contraption out here ready for work with the chrono and two blocks of gel. Now, I have done one test in this first block up here, but I managed to keep them all on the backside, so we got plenty of room up here to do what we need to do with this one. Now, as usual lately, we are sticking with my heavy clothing barrier that's got the layer of denim a layer of fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt material so like i said we're checking out some more 10 mil and as you can already see it's that familiar red black and gray box that y'all see in a lot lately the underwood ammo so we got a couple different kinds here first off we got their platinum edition extreme defender in 115 grain now this platinum edition is identical as far as loading and projectile to this their regular extreme defenders the only difference is it's got this coating on it now i forgot to look and find out what this coating is it may be teflon it may be something else i'm not really positive but the purpose of it is supposed to be to keep the corrosion down as far as long-term storage with these bear copper rounds it's supposed to be slicker so you don't have any feeding or cycling issues which i gotta say i've never had any kind of feeding or cycling issues in anything with any of these defenders uh any of these extreme defenders or extreme penetrators even without the coating so uh take that for what it's worth and they also claim decreased barrel wear because of the coating now obviously these are definitely light for caliber at 115 grains but the speed is where these are going to make it up they're saying 1700 feet per second on the box here so if they actually hit that you're talking about a good amount over 700 foot pounds of energy now i don't expect every bit of that but i do expect them to hit pretty close to that and now what i'm going to test beside this one is obviously some more 10 mil this is the 150 grain jacketed hollow point this is actually a nozzler projectile here so 150 grains i've had these for quite a while and i've never tested these so really curious to see what these do uh velocity on this is saying 1500 feet so again if it hits that you're talking about some nice energy for a 10 mil and then as far as what we're running these out of today it's going to be my good old glock 20 with the 4.6 inch barrel but i'm very curious to see what both of these rounds do y'all know how i feel about 10 mil if it's not up around 700 foot pounds of energy i really don't have no use for it personally so i expect good things from both of these rounds let me get this stuff set up and let's see what they can do all right y'all let's see what kind of speeds we can get out of these things i'm gonna do a five round average from both of them we're gonna start with these extreme defenders first now remember the box is claimed 1700 on this so just doing some rough figuring if we end up 50 short of that we're still right at 700 now if we're 100 short we're about uh 650 foot pounds but let's get the average and we'll worry about that but this will tell us a lot right here whoo that's spicy, buddy. 1651. Hoo, hoo, hoo. 1632. 1630. 1617. And 1628, so that still leaves us right about 700 foot-pounds. I'll show y'all the exact measurement, of course. So definitely some spicy boys. Not much recoil, but the report is loud out of these suckers right here. Let's go check that average. All right, so our five-round average there is 1,631 feet per second, so definitely not the 1,700. Now, they probably tested those out of a little bit longer barrel than this, and that's still going to give us just shy of 700 foot-pounds of energy, so not bad at all. Let me get it reset, and let's check out them 150s. All right, y'all, so far I'm liking what I'm seeing pretty good out of those, so let's try these 150-grain nozzler projectiles now. I'm going to do a five-round average on them. Now, y'all probably heard my little piece of steel ringing as I was chronoing. I've got my, my angle moving a little bit on this chrono i'm trying to figure out something that i can aim at instead of just like the dirt or a stump or something like that um and not only that but i want people to see that i always get a lot of comments about my backstop that i don't have a backstop the, the entire backstop back there is a mountain y'all i know some of y'all probably got enough sense to know that it's very misleading camera angles here but i'm just showing you right here that's at 35 yards and i'm running straight through this chrono standing up and it's way higher out there than i am but anyway let's get five rounds of this nozzler here now this stuff is saying 1500 on the box and that would give it over 700 foot pounds so pretty much the same kind of deal if we lose 100 here it's going to put us around 600 ish 650 i believe it was if we lose 50 it's still going to leave us at 700 so we're looking for i'm looking at my cheat sheet here we're looking for 1450 at least to still get to 700 so let's see what these things will give us y'all curious to feel the uh recoil difference on these also 
We got 1411. 1411 again, maybe? I'll try to look and make sure. 1418. 1427. And 1450. And I believe we only got four, so let me grab another round. All right, last one for number five, y'all. Got 1407, so not up to speed right there as far as the box. Again, let's check that average. All right, so our five round average that time was 1,422 feet per second. So just off the top of my head, that's gonna give us over 650 foot pounds for sure. Not quite 700, but that's still pretty good. And if y'all remember on them extreme defenders, it was 1631. So you are talking about 209 feet per second faster out of those lighter rounds, which that stands to reason. That's no surprise there. I believe we're right around the same energy though. So should be interesting to see what both of these do in the gel. Let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is. All right, y'all, it's platinum power jelly time. We'll put one of each round into the gel, starting with these Extreme Defender Platinums first. So really, really curious to see how these do. I expect them to do well. I'm just curious mostly about the penetration on them. So let's see what we get here, y'all. All right, that should have been a good one. It might have come out the side. I'm seeing some shadows. Let me see what I got. All right, false alarm, y'all. That one stayed in and actually a perfect placement right there too. So uh, I'm gonna try to put this one up under it. It's getting a little sketchy down here now. I'm getting a little bit worried because I don't have much room, but hopefully it'll stay out. If not, we can always send another one. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. That definitely hit the bottom. And I actually see some pieces of fragments of bullets there. We go see what's going on. All right, y'all, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. It got a little bit too low, although that's actually a valid, completely valid round right there. I'll show y'all here in just a little bit, but I want to move it up some just so we get a better picture. So I'm going to try my luck here, try to move it up some and get between those two. This is really pressing my luck right here. I mean, really pressing my luck. I definitely went up above that. Let me see if that one stayed out the bottom. All right, y'all, let's check out what we got down here. So the one on the top here, that was our Platinum Extreme Defender. As you can see, it comes in fantastic wound channel and disruption here. That's one thing about these fluted solid rounds. You always get this really, really nice, consistent disruption here. Carries through the first block, still a lot of disruption going on into the second block. And this thing made it almost halfway through this second block. So that's definitely more penetration than I thought we would see out of this thing but is that necessarily a bad thing i mean to some people it would be but it just depends on your use case really and then we got our 150 grain nozzlers here on the bottom so the very very bottom one that was the first one like i said that's plenty valid test right there as you can see it looks nearly identical to the second one we took so real nice disruption as it comes in here no doubt that it started expanding immediately disruption pretty much all the way through the wound channel starts dumping some lead here so you can see it's right on the ragged edge wanting to come apart dump some lead and this first one stopped right here but it was so close to the bottom and the force picking up the block popped around right out the bottom and landed right here on the table so i've actually got that round and we'll look at it here in a second and then obviously the second nozzle is right up above this one looks nearly identical as far as the way it performed here very nice disruption here all the way through the wound track definitely some more lead it looks like a little piece of jacket even lead and copper through the wound track and it stopped almost the exact same place as that first one right there definitely tons of expansion and fragmentation out of it so as far as the penetration this extreme defender is all the way out here at 22 and a half inches and then our two nozzlers stopped at exactly the same distance i mean exactly the same both of them are right there at 15 and a quarter inches 
Here's your closer look here. So the extreme defender here, both of the nozzlers here, as you can see, really, really nice. That disruption from that extreme defender is just crazy good, y'all. Nozzlers also, no slouch, but you can see it started shedding some material there. Follow them on through here. There's your nozzler there. Like I say, that one there, I've got it and we'll look at it, but there's the second one. And then the extreme defender kept on trucking into that second block. And there you see it sitting there. All right, let's check out these projectiles, y'all. So obviously the extreme defender here, the nozzler here, really nice expansion from this nozzler, as you can see now. That being said, it's obviously right on the edge of being pushed as far as it can without coming completely apart because there's no doubt it lost a lot of material in this gel. I can just see it in the wound track. So definitely right on the edge. And you can see here, it comes right out of the jacket just to put jacket separation basically. Now, these were stopped in the gel at the same spot but when i pulled them out it basically just fell out like that and this is actually the other nozzler like i said it popped out of the bottom there and was laying here on the table looks nearly identical and you'll see here same deal with the jacket it popped right out of the jacket so definitely if you're one that doesn't like that jacket separation for whatever the reason these may not be the one for you now obviously as far as the defender here no kind of deformation or expansion a lot of times you can see the little sharp corners around over and they may be rounded over a little bit it's really hard to say something interesting though is this coating is thicker than i thought it was now it's nothing super thick like powder coating but it's a lot thicker than i thought it was but let's get some measurements on them and see what we got there so obviously this extreme defender started at 115 and it's exactly 115.0 grain so right on the money there and then your nozzler started at 150 this one here was the one that stayed in the gel it's at 105.3 so a lot of material lost there and then this one here is at 108.7 so a lot of material loss from both of these they started like i said at 150 grains now as far as the measurements like i said obviously this extreme defender got no kind of expansion or anything like that but we'll get the measurements anyway looking at 400 on the diameter and then on the length you're looking at 579 and this one is also one that's hollow on the bottom just like that 45 ACP was. Now the nozzlers definitely got some expansion. I'll just use one because they both look about the same. You got 558, 554, and 540. So some pretty nice expansion on that one, even though it lost quite a bit of its material. So there you have it, y'all. Two more Underwood 10 mil rounds that actually deliver what you're expecting to see from a 10 mil. I think both of these did a fine job as far as choosing one. I think it would really depend on your use for these. This this extreme defender went much further than I expected it to. I expected it to maybe stop at about the end of the first block, maybe go into the second one a little bit, but this thing, I mean, y'all saw, it kept on trucking. It wasn't wanting to stop. Now, that being said, y'all know me, I'm the over penetration is not even a concern of mine, so I wouldn't have a problem carrying either one of these. I think, like I said, both of these actually give you pretty much what you expect to see from a 10 mil. All right, y'all, I'm gonna end it right there for this test of another couple of good 10 mil rounds. In this day and age of everybody watering down the 10 mil ammo so bad, it's definitely good to see another couple of rounds that get pretty much what you expect out of them. I personally think both of these rounds did a fantastic job out here. They delivered over 600 foot pounds of energy, getting up there towards 700. Now, I'd like to see that magic 700 number. If it would hit these velocities that are on the box out of this Glock 20, we'd have every bit of that and then some, but obviously it's tested out of a longer barrel but let me know what y'all think about these rounds were you satisfied with the performance you saw out of these here today if you were which one would you choose and what situation would you choose it for let me know in the comments what your thoughts are if you did enjoy the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure your notifications on so you don't miss anything when i upload it y'all check out those affiliate links down in the comments if you shop through amazon hit up my storefront link first you go right through amazon like normal from there and anything you buy after that i get a kickback from them towards the channel same goes for those axle links if you're looking for some really nice ear pro hit up those links down there and you can save a lot of money instead of going straight to their site once again i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel the way y'all do i've got lots of good stuff headed your way so be on the lookout for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon